Hi, and welcome to the second of my LED lamp uh, teardown videos. Um, the last one we looked at this GU10 LED lamp, and today we're going to look at a couple of, of these G4 discs. Um, actually, before we go on to the discs, um, a little bit of an update on this GU10. I did think. I concluded that the problem with this was lack of heat sinking, not enough heat sinking in here to take away the heat. And I was rather puzzled that none of these LED chips uh, seem to be working. Um, the idea that all nine of them should have failed is was a little bit puzzling. I concluded that that's what, what um, had happened, but not with a great deal of, of conviction. Um, trying to apply voltage to any of them uh, none of them seemed to light up at all. In fact, the greatest voltage I had easily to hand was from a 12 volt adapter. Um, since then, I realised that I had got a higher voltage available quite easily. Years ago, I built this um, analogue multimeter. In fact, if any of you, perhaps in your grandfather's loft, um, can find some copies of the Radio Constructor magazine dating back to the 1960s, early 1960s. You'll find this uh, this device um, described. In fact, it's, I think it was about the first time I ever had my name in print. Now this, in the high volt, high resistance range, has got a, a 22 and a half volt battery. Um, it's, I think it basically was designed as a, as a photographic battery. I don't think you can get them anymore. Uh, the one in here is decades old, but it still has a little bit of life in it, and it will produce a little bit more than the 12 volts that um, I had previously available. So if I put it on the high resistance range, that's the high resistance range here, basically the 22 and a half volt battery is connected to the terminals through a resistor so that if you touch the, the terminals together it should read full scale and you should have 100 microamps going through here. This is actually a 100 microamp um, movement. So I wonder if it'll actually light any of these LEDs. Let's give it a try shall we. It's going to be a little bit, you can see here if I just touch the two pins together there's enough current going through my fingers to um, make the needle move. So let's see what we can do. We touch that on that one and this one on there. Oh yes it lights up. Can you see that? Let me see. Can I see that? Yes, if I get my fingers out of the way you can see that that has lit up. And you can actually see several LED chips in there. Now, to make this a bit easier, I think I'll move this out of the way. I'll put this down here where you can see it. I'll see if I can zoom in on it somewhat. And hopefully we'll now be able to demonstrate this so that you can see it as well as me. OK, so my hands are out of the way. That seems to work. That seems to work. That one does too. The next row will be wired in the opposite direction. Might be easier if I just turn it round. Right. That seems to work. If it's still in your field of view. That one works as well. And this one that still works as well. Right, and let's try the bottom row. One of them, you remember, I tried to remove it and broke it completely. That seems to work. And that works as well. 
OK, so it looks as though all the lead chips in this one were still working. It could have been this one that had, um, had died and caused the thing to, to, to fail. So it could be, I don't know, um, something to do with the bonding of these little packages on, on the, um, the, the substrate. Difficult to say what's actually gone wrong with this, but anyway, it didn't last nearly as long as, as it should have. I thought afterwards that I could actually have tested it. I hadn't got anything more than um, 12 volts, but I could have used... I've got several of these old um, microphone batteries, and I could have just put two of them in series like that. That would have given me 18 volts, and that through a suitable resistor I could have used to test these LED lamps. OK, so that was the that was the GU10. So we come on to these two uh, G4 discs. Um, both of them have failed. Um, this one actually is more dramatic. I'll come on to this second, I think. In fact, this regulator chip, controller chip, has completely burnt out. Something fairly catastrophic had to happen to that. I've largely disassembled this. So we'll look first of all at this one. Now this, let me bring you a little bit closer. This has a much more complicated control circuit. Um, it's got the rectifier, it runs off 12 volts AC. It's got the rectifier, a smoothing capacitor, and then it has a little uh, controller chip, has a shot key diode and a coil. And that drives these um, 4, 8, 12 LED uh, packages. Now the GU10, that had a very simple control circuit. Uh, I showed it to you last week. This is the one. OK. So in this one we've just got the rectifier, a current limiting capacitor and a smoothing capacitor. And then that goes straight into the um, LED string. This one, since it runs off 12 volts, um, it's got a somewhat different um, circuit diagram. Let me show you this. Looks a bit more complicated, but actually it's quite, quite simple. We've got the 12 volts coming in here, 12 volts AC, and we've got the bridge rectifier just like we had before. And you remember, whichever, whether that's positive and that's negative, or that's positive and that's negative, uh, the result of this bridge rectifier is they always get positive coming out of here and it goes back into the negative there. And you've got the smoothing capacitor here, which is which is that component there. That comes into this little controller chip and you've got a little sense resistor here which comes through the LED string and then through this little coil here. And we've got this shock key diode here, which is that there. <coughs> OK, so how does this work? Well, a coil basically um, effectively adds momentum to an electric current. It's a bit like if you um, start pushing something heavy. Uh, it takes a little while to get it rolling, but once, it's getting, once you've got it rolling, it takes just as much effort to, to stop it. Take a dramatic example, if for instance you've got a canal boat or something and you're standing on the towpath of the canal, um, you can pull that canal boat, which may uh, weigh a number of tonnes, um, get it into motion quite quickly or fairly easily, but it takes, does take quite a lot of force. But having got it moving, it takes just as much force to actually stop it, from, stop it um, moving and bring it to a halt again. This is this... Um, little coil is, is rather similar in what it does. So when you switch it on, what happens? Well, this is a, a MOSFET transistor which can switch on and off. So initially that's on and the current comes down through here, through this current sense resistor, through the lead string, through this coil and then back through there. But as I say, the coil adds momentum, so the current has to start, has to gradually build up through this as it builds up the momentum. The moment, mem the momentum is, is actually um, the energy in the magnetic field in this coil. And you can see this, this coil has got a magnetic um, center. In fact, I've got a magnet here. I can show that it's magnetic. In fact, this is a, 
one of these um, magnets that somehow broke in half and you can see that that's that's quite magnetic so the magnetism builds up in that little coil and as it does so the current gradually increases as it increases the voltage drop across here gradually rises when there's no current going through here the voltage there is exactly the same as that but as the current gradually builds up the voltage here um, or the drop across here increases and so this little chip can actually measure the current going down here through the voltage across here once it reaches a certain volt certain um, value the maximum that these leds can take this it switches this transistor off so the current can no longer go round there well the current here we've got the magnetic field still storing quite a lot of energy and the and this really wants to make the current go somewhere can't go there anymore so it then comes down here and can come, come through this Schottky diode and go back through that way so so long as the magnetic field um, in this little coil is maintained and while it just decays the current through here just carries on going through and continues to light the LED or the LED string as it does so the current is gradually decaying and so the resistor the voltage across this current sense resistor gradually drops this chip uh, record is able to um, measure that voltage and sees the, vol the voltage drop um, across here reducing and once it determines that the current through here has dropped to a certain value it switches this, this on again so the current then can start going down here and starts building up the current the uh, magnetic field in here until it's reached a certain value then it switches off again you'll notice that the current can't go through that way through that diode normally well we now want to test this and see whether we can find out anything that's um, not working in this first of all let's have a look at this this bridge rectifier now I've got my check that I can actually right I'll bring this I need to zoom that in somewhat so that you can see it let me put that on that side and that on there and we've got our gadget there in fact I think I'm going to turn it that way around which is easier for me and I think the light is a little bit better for you okay I've had a little bit of difficulty getting everything into view so that you can see it and the light is not so good it's coming from the window to my right so you can only I think you can just see the screen here now if I connect the probe here to here I get a voltage drop of 5.9 of 0.598 volts so that's the um, the diode coming out that that way probably and likewise if I put it on there I get 0.6 of a volt so from this positive um, output either to there through that diode or to there through that diode we've got half a volt to drop if I swap them over that's actually 1.9 volts well actually is should be infinity or overload ol um, but the current is actually going through somewhere else okay so that diode those two diodes are okay if i turn it around and the other connect to the negative instead and for the negative to either the ac inputs i've got 0.6 of a volt or thereabouts so that little rectifier seems to be fine next thing then is the reservoir capacitor now for this I'm going to use this little tester which I introduced before but didn't show you how it works now I just plug it in right can you see that I think so All right let me turn it round <coughs> right right no component found it takes gave the battery voltage as 8.12 which is okay right I'm just going to pause for a moment while I get some um, some test leads for that 
Okay, so I've now found some test leads for this and I've connected them onto here and I need to connect them onto this capacitor which we're going to test one there one there if I can get them onto the, the leads of the capacitor and press the button and see what it says battery 8.13 volts that's okay no component found well, at that point, you wiggle these and check that they're on properly. That this is on here. Try it again. Once again, no component found. Well, in fact, that's what I found before. It looks as though this capacitor is completely open circuit. It isn't doing anything, anything at all. I did initially take it off. I unsoldered it. In order to test it because it's much easier to take it off it's possible that I broke one of the leads or the connection to the um, whatever's inside and in taking it off which could have done the damage even so without that capacitor it'll simply mean that the rest of the circuit is being fed with unsmoothed um, rectified DC so it should, should still actually work um, but it'll be very flickery um, but that doesn't account for why it, it's not working OK, the coil, we can also test that with this little gadget, but that's going to be rather tricky because I need several hands to do that. Uh, if I could ask you to press that button at the right point, unfortunately, you're not here in real time, so I can't actually do that, but that's what I ideally need you to do because I've got to try and get these pins onto this coil. And it's a surface mount coil, so hopefully I can press one pin on each side. And whilst doing so, see if I can reach that and press that. Now, is it going to stay? It says C, which is wrong. OK. All oh, right. OK. It's, 0.69 ohms and 43.0 microhenries. Okay, so that's a coil. So that's correctly diagnosed that. Uh, a coil of 0.69 ohms. So the actual one ohm on there has a very low resistance and it has 43 microhenries. Well, actually, it's not much um, to go wrong in this coil. Uh, one small thing you might be able to see is that in um, putting that magnet against it, I seem to have cracked the um, the ferrite um, core there uh, so that would reduce its um, its value somewhat so that's not the problem so the other thing is this Schottky diode and for that we can come back to my test meter back on the diode range can you see that yes I think you should be able to see that and see if I can Test that with these test leads. How's that? Yes, I think you can see that. It's sideways to you, but I can turn it round. Why can't? Why shouldn't I turn it round? And I can then put this on the desk and see if I can touch onto this diode. And that says 0.198 volts. So a shot key diode actually drops much less voltage than an ordinary silicon diode like we've got four of in there. Turn it the other way around and it's still saying 1.7. Um, that's because there's current going through um, some other path in this circuit. If I took that off it would um, give OL overload um, for the reverse because there should be no current or virtually no current going around there. So there's nothing wrong with those components except for that smoothing capacitor. So then we want to see if we can test each of these LEDs in turn and see which of the um, um, diodes the LED packages seems to have failed. In this case I think it is several of those packages which have failed. Let me pause again while I get my stuff together. So here we are. I'm going to test the LED packages in this uh, 
device with the test meter. On the diode range it's supplied with a 9 volt battery. Um, it obviously goes through a resistance so 9 volts should be plenty to illuminate any of these LEDs if they're still working. So if I apply the terminals to any of these, we don't know which what polarity it is. It's a little bit awkward since it's jiggling about. Let me get a bit of blue tack. When I stick it on the desk with a bit of blue tack, it'll stop it jiggling about. That's better. Now let's um, try this one for instance for starters. Doesn't seem to be that way round. Let's try the other way round. There, yeah, that's lighting up quite nicely. I don't know whether you can see, it's probably too bright actually, but there are, you can actually see three LED chips um, individually lighting up there. Now if I focus in on that, you might just be able to see that. Let me expand this as far as I can. Move it over to there a bit. Now we'll see whether which way around was it? Was it? I think it was that way. I don't know whether I think it's probably going to be so overexposed that you can't actually see, but you can actually see three LED chips light up in there. If we try another one. Now that I can see has only got one chip of light. And this one will be the other way around. That has got three. This one. That's got three. Try the other way. That's got two. Oh, it's only got one now. So that seems to be distinctly dodgy. Other way. That's got the three. That's got two and one of them is fainter than the other two. It's got one there, one there and a fainter one there. And this one. Try the other way. That's got the three. And try the four in the middle. These test leads are getting twisted up. Now it's only got two alight. That's only got two alight. Try the other way. That's got the three. And that's got two and the third one seems to be blinking a little bit, coming and going. So basically the problem with this is that most of the LED packages on here have actually partially or totally failed. So checking the, the connections on here um, with the meter on the continuity function, I found that in fact this um, device has got Four sets of three packages, each of which has got three diodes in it. You've got three more of those. And in each of these packages, in each of these strings, where have I? I've got a note here. One LED in each of these, each of three of the strips has only got one die working, and another in another strip has only got two. So you've got quite a lot of dies actually partially or totally dead in there. One thing I did just to check out the rest of the circuit on here is the couple of connections through here, the plated through holes, which connect the back to the front, and that's the connection onto here. So I reamed out those to break those connections. I then connected onto here um, three blue LEDs and tried it with 12, 12 volts and that and um, that seemed to work all right. It, it lit the three LEDs quite nicely. Before doing that I had to change this resistor because this 
um, this current sensing resistor that I showed you before. This one here sets the actual total current, so I had to change that to set it to um, more like um, 20 milliamps as the current that it would send through here. I've got a, a, a photo that I took um, of that and I'll put it on the screen now. In this picture you can see the three blue LEDs that I soldered on in place of the um, array on the, pre on the other side, which showed that the um, controller chip and everything else was working. So the other of these uh, G4 discs um, was a total disaster. Um, I think if I can bring it up close, see if it'll focus on it. I don't want to focus. That's it, okay. So you can see that the controller chip in there, does it focus any better than that? Yes, is totally pretty much exploded by the looks of it. Something is very seriously um, overloaded or gone pretty seriously wrong with this. So in this, just like the other, we've got 12 packages and they're connected in six strings of only two packages each. When I connected, when I tested them through, you can test in each three each of the individual LEDs individually, as I showed you just now, and all the LEDs seem to be okay. So something quite disastrously happened here. Perhaps it was a manufacturing fault in this controller chip, which caused it to die fairly catastrophically. Hard to tell. Um, the other components I took off and tested them all. The bridge rectifier was fine, the coil was fine, the diode was fine, the inductor was fine, and the current sensing resistor was fine. So it presumably, presumably must have just been some kind of, of um, manufacturing fault in that, um, um, in that controller chip which um, caused it to fail catastrophically. Okay, so those are the two um, discs. And while we're here, I've got another disc which is in fact um, working for my desk light at the moment. If I move you over here onto this piece of paper, my desk light is, is there. It's one of these um, simple desk lights with a transformer in the base and originally it had a 12 volt halogen bulb. But if I now got a little eye loop here, if I use that to bring it up to the to the desk light so that I can project an image of the LEDs onto this piece of paper. Now here I think rather better than if I get the angle of the lens right you can see some of those packages have got three um, LED chips working and some have only got two and there's one or two that's only got one you can see there and this has started flickering late, lately, so um, some more of those lead chips are on their way out. The uh, two on the bottom left, I think those keep flickering both. So that probably that one remaining lead in that uh, package is on its way out. And that'll be in series with one, at least one other package. And once that goes, um, that pair at least will, will stop working. OK, so those are the G4 discs and I'll come back um, perhaps in a week or so's time and find some more. Um, actually, the other day somebody asked me to look at one of these micro projectors. Got this nice, quite nice little micro projector here, but um, the bulb has gone or something's gone. And a friend of mine asked me to have a look inside. So that will be interesting as well. That's got um, a, a fairly high power LED in it or perhaps it's several RGB LEDs I'm not sure until we get inside and see what's um, going on inside and see whether we can whether there's any chance of fixing that okay come back in a week or so's time and hopefully I'll have another um, tear down for you I've got another of these GU10s and I've got several of these a couple of Bennett lamps and I've got a um, 
R80 and I've also got one of these filament style lamps as well and we'll have a look at those and see what uh, we can learn about how they seem to have failed. Okay come back in a week or so's time and we'll carry on.